world that no one wants to be a part of. The best of thrills and spills from 1990. As some of the drivers in the world's fastest sport will stop, while others will end their day with flames and smoke, like the fiery crash from Riverside Park Speedway. to decorate the Christmas tree. Get things ready for the holiday. Everyone will be over to discuss and look back and think about what they've done during the year. That's what this edition of Race Week is all about. Hello, I'm Ben Dodge, and I welcome you to the best of spills and thrills for 1990. You know, part of the festivities here at Race Week is at this time of the year, we always take a look back at some of the more thrilling and exciting things that have occurred during the season. Well, 1990 was a new decade in motorsports. And with that new decade, the spills and thrills began right from the very start during Daytona Speed Week's 1990. It was a picture-perfect way to start off a new decade in racing from the Daytona International Speedway, but right from the start, the ARCA 200 proved interesting. Gary Weinberg had crossed up right in front of the leaders. That sent Charlie Glossback and Red Farmer and Tracy Leslie sliding for life to the center of the infield. Then it was the twin 125s when a pair of twins, Kenny Schrader and Hud Strickland, got crossed together. And what about Dick Trickle? Need a little help or need a little gas was the story here as he slid down to the infield with a number 66. Now get ready for the biggest wreck in the history of Daytona. It was the Goodies 300, and they needed more than headache powder for this one, as 23 cars were involved in the melee. And then the short track season began at New Smyrna Speedway. Nine nights of consecutive racing saw Hitchcock have a problem, Baldwin get out of shape, and he'd blame it on the full moon. That was the real problem. But the next night, there was no full moon, and Jamie Domeno had almost the same type of a problem. And so did Jensen and a cast of several other competitors in this open wheel modified division. I mean, even the Reds would have his share of problems, being involved in a mix-up with Eddie DeHunt that started a season-long quest between them. And then Ruggiero would vacate his number one car and strap into his backup automobile. Just as he was coming to the front, he would spin and slam the wall and do damage to this car, too. Not a good start, just like he said. But the competition still continued. Tommy Bowles and the Reds would lock horns, as once again Ruggiero would go around, and Jamie Tomato didn't have much luck here. But for the rest of the field, it would be a good night, the opportunity to head to the front. And in the late models or pro stock type cars, well, they had their share of problems, too. But the modifieds really put on a show. Tony Jan Kowiak looked like a shoe-in in this event when Jamie Domeno would get crossed up. And in pro-stock competition, there were several other pirouettes and duets, too. A lot of damage done here as they'd be sliding and slamming and banging through the nine consecutive nights of racing. Now check out this pro four shot. As Robbie Clark and Tim Bainey come together, Clark suffers the worst of the damage here. Now let's go to the other side of Daytona, the Volusia County Speedway. Tuck Tretton drops off the pace with car number 07. Junior Hanley squeaks by. Russ Erland has no place to go. Literally hand grenades into the wall. The car that was once a full car becomes a subcompact. And Erland is out for the day. Keith Cocker with car number 3. The modified gets buried in the dirt. He's okay, but the car shows the worst of the wear. The modified tour season began at the Martinsville Speedway as Heveron got out of shape. Charlie Pastriak and Carl Pastriak, the Pastriak brothers, locked horns and got together. But that wasn't the only problem there. It was Joe Nimichek who got crossed up with the number 87. He tried to gather it back, but then it was Harry Gann and Steve Grissom who'd lock horns and send up the dust. At the Thompson Speedway, Brian Ross would get locked with Scott Watts as the fans were trying to keep warm. It was warm for old Rusty Ball, and he was involved with Richard Savory. 
Dick Brooks has given him sign language as the Reds loses the tire and slams the wall hard. Charlie Pastrnak becomes hot stuff at the Thompson Speedway. In the Whitson Racing Series Modifieds, The Rock dies beneath Jeff Berry. Berry goes around, and the Christopher brothers duke it out a little bit, showing the worst of the wear here, too. And down the back straightaway, it's Ted Christopher, who bonsai's in, then bonsai's out. And this creates a real mix-up. Moose Hewitt is involved, and so is in several other front-running cars. the actions in and there. Sam Stern decides to show a new pattern. Savory becomes a victim. And involved with this is Joe LeMay with car number zero. They're all crossed off in this Pro 4 main event. And they're angry, too. Except for Richard Savory. Stern says, what happened? Ever try running four wide at Thompson? It doesn't work. And Ron Pettis discovered just that with car number 45X. But that wasn't the only story being told. Rosenfield went to the outside of Perino, slammed the wall with car number 29. Rosenfield day had ended, and the Easter Bunny special had been thrown out of the event by Bill Slater. The lay models have their share of problems in the icebreaker event as Leo Bim Adams slams the wall hard with a Tiger number 5. And down the front straightaway, up in smoke for Jim Mott And Herb Bennett, he takes a hard shot to the wall with car number 64. Then there was mud box going on in the bottom of turn 1 and 2 with Tony Sylvester. At Richmond International Speedway, a Hirschman slammed the wall hard. As Heveron slid by, he was safe. Short track style. They bump and they grind off the turn. Jerry Marquis gets crossed up. Dan Avery bounces off the wall and gets away here. John Zavisa and Ricky Summers play tag. And John Zavisa gets away with car number 01. The Coors Act Tour got well underway as Kelly Moore would get crossed up with the number 1X. Dave Dion would be involved. Dan Beatty would also be challenging as McDonald would take Dion out to the outside. Dion would cut down low, aim to get out of arm's way. Tilt, the light was down, and Dion was out of the competition for a while at least. Then there was more action for the course tour as Dan Beatty backs it into the wall with the number 53. But it didn't end there. A piece of debris off Roger LaPearl's car would be a real problem for Russ Erland. The vacuum cleaner underneath his car. And what about Jim Gallison? Can he save it? Going, going, gone. Well, we're already off to a great start with spills and thrills. And if we had to buy a Christmas gift for Red McDonald, we'd know exactly what to buy him. I mean, after all, Dave Dion did a good job of taking down one of his poles. We could buy him a pole. It would be the ideal gift. Well, next, we're going to be taking a commercial break. And when we come back, we'll give you more of the best of spills and thrills right after this. Welcome back to Race Week. Well, now it's time to go back and take a look at more spills and thrills. It's April, and that means things are getting well underway in auto racing. So let's go and take a look at more spilling and more thrilling as we go and take a look at more of the best from 1990. Well, now it's time for a high-flying act, and that high-flying act is Ricky Summers. As he got higher than most with the Billy Simons number nine. And what about this battle? The track just wasn't wide enough for Mike Stefanik. Tommy Bowles tags him and gets around too. And Dan Avery, well, he uses a lot of racetrack in this one as Perino, Tom Rosati, Teddy Ebert, and Scott Booley all get tangled up. And a brand new race car for Tommy Byrne becomes a much shorter race car early in the event. Brian Crunnan gets crossed up again and Fern's first night out becomes even more disastrous. Bo Gunning sends up a parade of smoke. Johnson gets crossed up. The old squeeze play here. Several front running cars involved in this one. Tommy Georginis goes up on two wheels with car number 86. And then there's more great racing action in Riverside. When suddenly it is Ed Kennedy who gets crossed up. About 10 cars is involved in this one. And at the Martinsville Speedway, closer than most people park, best applies here. And Tommy Bowles almost gets parked going into turn number three. Jay Hedgecock does, and Ricky Fuller is involved here, too. In May at the Manatnock Motor Raceway, this accident literally took out 90% of the field. Fact is, they put out a red flag and gave everybody about 20 minutes to get back into the show. 
The trick front suspension doesn't look too trick this time for Mike Stefanik. Jerry Marquis gets tagged with the BT-73. It looks more like a boat than a race car here. For the dirt modifieds move to asphalt, Bob McCready and Danny Johnson lock horns. They literally block the race track as these two go spinning. At the Stafford Motor Speedway, it looked like any other Friday night event when Sneed and Barry would come together. Then it was more trouble of the same type as Christopher would slam the wall hard in turn number one. Back at Riverside Park Speedway, it is Eddie Carroll who gets parked with car number 27. And in the late model division, Roger Charette gets bounced around as he brings it across the track. The NASCAR Modified Tour turns upside down as Charlie Rudolph slides on his loop all the way down the back straightaway. With a parade of flames and a parade of sparks, the 72 is upside down. Dan Avery gets crossed up. They go down through the infield like loose fire. Some make it by and others don't. Bob Sekolowski gets crossed up with front of 04, bounces up next to the wall here. At Thunder Road, there is just that, a lot of thunder. As Jeff Stevens gets crossed up and goes around, Dan Beatty is also involved in this one with Buzzy Bizantin and Robbie Crown. Whole qualifying action at the Thompson Speedway, Bruce Delisandro decides to go straight. Charlie Rudolph is involved, so is an S.J. Boston and Danny Watts. Mike McLaughlin tries to find some room. It doesn't exist. He goes around, a hammer on slams the wall. The Reg is around backwards. Bo Gunning and Eddie Spires get locked together. Gunning slams the wall. Spires hides in the infield. He sends up the dust. Dan Avery's out in front. John Zubisa scrapes the wall, and Jerry Marquis gets crossed up. They're two by two and stuck like glue. Teddy Hebert and Jerry Marquis with an over 73. Blaine Bells is involved. Eddie Carroll loses some body panels, but still things are okay. The Red tries to pull a bold, aggressive move to the bottom of Marquis as the two get locked together. That stirs up even more controversy. Back at the high banks, Dwight Jarvis gets pinned. Brian Schofield makes the tag. At Beatford's Motor Speedway, Kelly Moore, Steve Milton, and Tom Kenyon come together in the course tour event there. The World of Outlaws, Ricky Hart and Bobby Davis, Lockhorn. At Manatnock Motor Raceway, more thrashing and crashing for the modified tour. Jeff Fuller goes around, Doug Heveron backs into him with car number three. Good enough in Boniface, duke it out at the high banks of Manatnock, but good enough wasn't that good on this day. Matter of fact, he wasn't that good on that day either. Dick Belisle decides to play in the sand at the Oxford Plains Speedway. And at rolling wheels for the outlaw, Kenny Jacobs and Keith Hoffman come together. Hoffman ends up flipping. At Riverside Park Speedway, at the start of a feature event in June, Havoc would strike. They said this would be the worst fiery crash in the history of racing at Riverside. There were several cars involved. Wade Cole with car number 33, Eddie DeHunt number 9, the 54 of Hytella, and Charlie Pastriak with car number 5, just to name a few. The fuel cell of the hunt car had been punctured. The ruptured fuel on the racing surface literally ignited, engulfing both the hunt car and Wade Cole's number 33. To the assistance of other drivers, these drivers were able to get away. Wade Cole suffered severe burns in the tragedy. At the Star Speedway in the Supers, Chris Purley and Bob Whitcomb would lock horns as the Wing Warriors would be added once again. The Mod Tour was back at Stafford and problems right from the start. The Hunt, Reggie Rogerio, George Kett, George Runhutzel, and Tommy Bowles were in this one. And then it was Sat Worley who was involved as Jeff Fuller got squeezed in the middle with car number eight. More great racing action at Stafford as Doug Walcott and Richie Gallup, along with the 72 of Charlie Rudolph, all got locked together here. Mike Levetri tries to take it in turn number one a little bit too deep. Willie Hardy and Galulu get locked up in the front straightaway at Stafford. Riverside Park, Jerry Marquis and Roy Seidel come together. Marquis decides to discuss things with Richie Gallup. Caruso, Wayne Carroll, and Blaine Bells. And what are you, crazy? That's what Steve Nolton says as he took a look at his race car. Buzzy Bazanton gets up on the barriers once again. In the first at Star Speedway, Peter Schwartz and Kevin Stewart get locked together and go around. More thunder and excitement on the modified tour right from the start at Riverhead as Jeff Fuller is involved in the mix-up. A lot of other cars involved, like Heveron literally on top of Ricky Fuller. Tom Baldwin runs away. Heveron tries to get back down. He does. Bobby Park still sits there and can't believe what he's seen. And Ricky Fuller's car looks more like an open-wheel super. Midgets only come to Riverside once a year, and Drew Fenoro gets upside down. Jeff Horn and Russ Dora also involved in the mix up here. Then what a shot. Howard Bumpus slams Glenn Cabral and Ricky Hart. But Bumpus gets upside down on his side. 
IndyCar competition at Lee USA. Johnny Parsons goes straight and slams the wall hard. Pro stock competition continues at the Stafford Motor Speedway. Three wide, they head into the turn. In trouble is Rick Turcott. Brian Slotin is also involved. Jeff Zadima and Tony Papali. At Riverside Park Speedway, it looks like any other Saturday night, when all of a sudden everyone decides to park down the front straightaway. This is about 50% of the field. The drivers get out, survey the damage, get back in, and right into the competition. Fire slams the wall hard, almost like the car was possessed. And then it was Jeff Fuller who's looking great at Jennerstown, so he cut a right rear tire and goes spinning with car number eight. Seth Woolley would also be involved, and Brother Rick wasn't going to get out of the act either. Keep your eyes on car number 17. Some fancy driving here for Bill Marcy, who goes around, then over. Star Speedway would also host the NASCAR Winston Modified Tour. Charlie Rudolph would dive to the bottom. Hoffman would give him a tap, sending Rudolph around, and Bob with Bobby Park. At the Stafford Motor Speedway, things got tight once again down the front straightaway. They were all okay, with the exception of about three or four cars, and a wheel that ended up winning this race. In the late models at the Stafford Motor Speedway, Kanopka does a 360 and somehow tries to continue before Wayne Ibitz and Chuck Doherty gets involved. Front straightaway action. They shortened up Sperry's car rather nicely. Germani is able to get away. Down the back straightaway at Stafford, Ed Kennedy gets crossed up. They're piled up literally on top of each other. Ed Kennedy, Chris Kopeck up on top of Mike Stefanik, and John Zavisa has been in there too. Ah, the classic battle here. The two Mikes, Mike McLaughlin and Mike Stefanik. Well, you've just witnessed some heated action already shaping up. Well, now it's time to take another commercial break. And when we come back, it'll be time to take a look at more hot summer action as spills and throws continue right after this. Mike Stefanik in number 15, West Greenwich, Rhode Island. The trouble, Jeff Fuller to the wall. And he had help. He comes sliding back out. But for one major driver, that was pretty much the story on an afternoon at the Hudson Speedway. Well, remember, as we continue to watch the best of spills and thrills, you should be judging and picking on what you think was the most thrilling and most spectacular thrill or spill from the 1990 season. Well, now it's time to move on through the month of August right to the close of the 1990 season as it's back to more thrilling and more spilling as we take a look at the best and perhaps even the worst from 1990. July got off to a good start at the new New Hampshire International Speedways. Davey Johnson would get crossed up to the number 26 and slam the wall. Then out into the loose stuff and into the marbles. Ricky Craven and all of a sudden Bobby Labonte went end over end and did a barrel roll with car number 44. But that wasn't the only problem in this event. Derek Koch, winner of the Daytona 500, got way out wide slammed the front rotating wall, then got crossed up and slammed the inside wall with the Purelator number 10. But there was still more action. This time, Randy LaJoy and Robert Presley and Kelly Moore would lock horn, literally hang off the turn. Back at Manatonock Motor Raceway, Richie Gallup would get locked together with Ricky Fuller with car number six. More racing action here when Kirby Monteith would get locked on Dwight Jarvis's car. Rusty Ball would also be involved in the mix-up as Tom Baldwin would get away. Good enough would go to the outside. Punky Karen and Pete Biondaka literally blows the top off of his car. And it didn't stop there. By no means. At Riverside Park Speedway, Brian Scofield gets pushed around a bit. Charlie Pasterak and Bob Polveruri is in the middle of this one. Stan Gregor, then Edzo Hunt goes up on top of him, slides down the back straightaway out of the group with car number nine. Low stock competition, it was Rick Turcott down to the infield, stopped with the big barrier, stops in first. At the Thompson Speedway for the dirt modified, Jack and Trell gets crossed up, Bob McCready and Hoffman go down through the infield. When well, they get them all back together, they're ready to go once again, and Billy Decker decides to do some dancing of his own, and he somehow is able to hold on. But the action continues. Riverhead Raceway, the modified floor. We've got Mikey Winitsko and Sat Worley locking horns and coming together. Bernie Harback, the hometown favorite, goes end over end in a barrel roll at Riverhead Raceway. For the big race at the Thompson Speedway, it's Rick Trotter who does a little trotting to the outside and slams the wall. Dick Martell tries to hold on with the number 33. He almost does the same. Crosses it back up and comes back across the racetrack. Close one there. 
at the Oxford Plains Speedway, it's Kelly Moore. Robbie Clark is involved in this one, and Mike Whedon gets squeezed to the outside. Star Speedway, more of the midgets. Joey Coy does a nice, easy roll with the number 94. And on dirt, Hoffman goes to the outside, gets pinned out there, and slams the wall with car number one. And that night, Motor Raceway in the pro stock, Roger Raymond is stuck in the middle at the Thompson International Speedway as the hunt gets bounced around and the wedge gets away. Thompson Speedway, Bush Grand National, Kelly Moore, Jamie Aubie come together. The two go sliding through the center of the infield. Tommy Bush finds his skills in the Bush Grand National has a little bit of a problem. The modified tour was back at Riverside Park Speedway, and Reggie Ruggiero and Mikey Winnisco would lock horns as the Reds just wouldn't have any luck. In the Bush Grand Nationals, Moore and Aubie were doing it once again. It was a real battle to the finish, and what a thriller as Mike McLaughlin showed the fans that he could really still run the park. The dirt modifieds are back on asphalt at Cayuga. Now check out this in-car camera stuff on the Randy Slack car. He fights it, tries to hold on, and comes to an abrupt stop. And speaking of stops, this is no place to stop. Mike Christopher finds that out, but Scott Dorman hits him at a ton with car number 99. And the pro stocks are hot stuff at the Stafford Motor Speedway. Just ask Wade Gagner, driver of car number 7. At the Riverside Park Speedway, Todd Anderson decides to play leapfrog over Chris Benson Wood in car number 2X. Back at the Thompson International Speedway, the Bush Clash. Richie Gallup slams the wall hard. The Reg is involved, and so is in Brian Miller. More great racing action. Don Fowler does a 360 spins. Up, up, and away goes car number 03 for Lou Tabot. Good racing action here as the Christophers get locked together as car number 79 goes spinning. Pro 4 racing action, Richard Savory slams the wall hard and rides it into turn number two. The race of champions, Frank Kogel gets up with car number 51 and comes back down. Six of the front running cars involved here. Ron Rocco sells a piece of the rock to Phil Rondo with car number eight. Let's see a violent wreck. This is one of the worst ones in the history of the dirt organization. Lap number 84, 11 cars involved. Billy Decker right in the middle of things. More great racing action, this time for the Bush Grand Nationals, as Jamie Aubie is locked together here. At Syracuse, Bob McCready slams in hard with car number nine. Danny Johnson is supposed to be turning out of the pits, not into the pits, with car number 28. At the Oktoberfest at Lee USA, it's Russ Thor who gets crossed up, and he's right in the middle as he gets slammed hard. Martinsville Speedway, great race beginning. Jeff Fuller comes in, slams the infield wall, the throttle sticks, slams the outside wall, and brings it back down to the bottom of turn number three. Gobble, gobble, it's time for the Turkey Derby from the Wall Stadium. George Ross, Greg Tomato, and Clark Van Persick race to the checker. This time it's Joe Marlino and George Ross who do a pirouette of duet. John Blewett hang grenades into the wall with the 76. Well, as you can see, there was a lot of spills and thrills during 1990. Well, now it's time to take a look at our picks. On a lighter note, well, the best of the lighter notes would have to be Dave Dion and Randy McDonald's coming together and putting out the lights at Lee USA. On a more serious note, the worst thrill or spill of the 1990 season took place back in June at the Riverside Park Speedway. On lap number five of the modified feature, it appeared like any other Saturday night program when suddenly the top five cars got locked together and tangled. A fire erupted, which literally ignited five automobiles in the racetrack itself. Through the heroic of the safety crew and other drivers, all drivers were able to walk away. Still, our pick for the worst accident of the year didn't occur on asphalt, but actually occurred on dirt. It was at Rolling Wheels back in September 23rd. Lap number 84, Billy Decker got crossed up, literally bounced around and entangled with 11 other cars on the front straightaway. The worst accident in the history of dirt. Involved also in the serious melee was Pat Ward. All drivers were miraculously okay. Now let's take a look at it once again and listen to the sound effects of this unbelievable crash. going to kind of wrap things up for this edition of race week on the next edition of race week we'll be taking a look at the first half of the season on the nascar winston modified tour as we kick off another new year in motorsports the new year's edition of race week will be coming at you next week 
Until then, we say take care, and we'll see you again next time. Merry Christmas to all of you, and let's hope your holidays are happy and loaded with good cheer. Take care. Bye-bye now. Dazzling 